Good evening. Welcome to the West Georgia Planning Commission meeting for January 5th, 2016. I'll note that uh, all members of the commission are present tonight. We have some housekeeping items to take care of before we jump into our agenda. And the first item is uh, swearing in of our new and reappointed commissioners. <coughs> This one is yours. Excellent. Welcome back for three more years, and Judy, it's going to be great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, being a new year, we have the uh, opportunity to elect a new chair and vice chair. Commissioner Byer. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to move to uh, nominate you, Dan Moss, for chairman for 2016. Second. I'd like to set that nomination. Move to close. <laughs> no other nominations for chair? I think we can dispense with voting, couldn't we then, Julie? Uh, favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Sounds good. Uh, we'll do that for, uh, for vice chair. I'm going to nominate uh, Commissioner Pack here. Second. Thank you. I'll accept the nomination. Thank you. Any other nominations for vice chair? Yeah, this might be the easiest I've seen this done in six years. Uh, any, all in favor of that? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I think we're there. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, we also have two uh, two positions open on the design review committee, of which we are going to make we get to make two appointments to that. Uh, discussing in our pre meeting, Commissioner Hansen and uh, Commissioner Heiner yes. have volunteered to uh, to be those liaisons for us on the DRC. Thank you for that. We did a little bit of a rearrangement on our agenda to try and streamline things tonight. Uh, items four and five will be uh, on a consent calendar. So I would entertain a motion for those two items. So moved. Second. Motion by uh, Commissioner Hansen, second by Commissioner Pack. Any discussion to the motion? Just clarification on that. Yes. Condition. Uh, backing up just a little bit, we did have a uh, uh, staff presented us with a slight wording change on condition one in that, uh, just changing, uh, removing the word city staff from that first condition there. There was also the, the could leave it in consideration. In consideration, I think, was the, there were a few changes on that. Yeah. It says staff requirements in consideration, and that was changed oh, to the yes. requirements for. Based on the change presented to us in the pre-meeting. There we go. Uh, any discussion of the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. And then we're going to run our public hearing first. Uh, it sounds like uh, item number six might take a little bit more time tonight. 
So we'll begin with the SME Steel Sandblast Building Rezone on 5650 West Old Bingham Highway, considering a rezone of 13 acres from CM to M1. Uh, SME Steel is the applicant. The time is now yours. Hi, my name is Tim Salak. I'm a representative of SME Steel, and we're requesting the Commission's approval of a rezoning from CM to M1. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about that, the reason behind that? Or? Uh, part of the reason is to allow us to construct a building there that's over the 35-foot height that CM governs in M1. The building is actually 41 feet. So changing the zoning will allow us to construct that. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Doesn't sound like it. Thank you. And we'll turn it over to Mr. Dallas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I won't go into a lot of detail on this other than that you did review the condition lease for outdoor storage back in November. Um, that concerned or looking at putting a new building on the property but couldn't make it uh, fit under the CM zoning requirements. Um, our computer's locked up, so I'd show you the, <coughs> the site, uh, but I think that's, that's contained within your packets. Um, the request is to rezone the property to, from CM to M1. Uh, given that it's next to M2 zoning, it's by the mountain corridor, we really, really don't see any uh, issues or concerns for, uh, for approving the zone change at this location. So with that, uh, and given the fact that it's consistent with our general plan, we recommend approval uh, of the, or that you board a positive recommendation to the city council to rezone the property. Any questions for staff? Yeah. So, just for my edification, since I'm still almost a rookie at this, what's the difference between CM, M1, M2? Is there, is there really that much difference? You know, when you, when you get right down to it, the M2 is the, is the most intensive of the, <coughs> of the, the zoning districts. It allows the really heavy kinds of industrial uses. M2 is, a little, is considered a light manufacturing. A um, little less intensive uses are allowed, but they're still... Fairly, they're still fairly intensive. Um, the CM are starting into the commercial kinds of uses, so okay. that's really the only, really the difference between them. So they're still, they're still the heaviest of our. Uh, of our so just industry. given given the nature of the property, it's really an industrial area, and nobody's going to put seat commercial type stuff in this area anyway. No, <clears throat> not at this location. There's no access to freeways or. So it just, it just makes sense. <coughs> Any other questions for staff? <coughs> this was agenda as a public hearing, so I'll open up this item to the public. If there's anybody who would like to comment on it, I would invite you to the microphone if you would kindly give us your contact information, and you'll have three minutes to make your comments. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to commission. Um, well, based on the findings set forth in the staff report, upon evidence and explanations received today, I move that the Planning Commission forward a positive recommendation to the City Council to rezone the property located at approximately 5650 West Old Bingham Highway from a CM heavy commercial zone to an M1 light industrial zone district. Second. Motion by Commissioner Skoski, second by Commissioner Cooney. Any discussion to the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Which brings us to the last item on our agenda tonight, which is the view at 5600. Uh, council asked us to review the density buy ups uh, based on their two meetings of discussions, which brings us back to today. Uh, so we'll turn over to Larry for a little bit of background information on that, where we stand today, and then maybe we can just jump through these one at a time. and. Review the pros and cons. Okay, so the Planning Commission approved this last September, I believe, and it went forward to the Council for ratification in uh, October. Uh, I don't have the exact, I think it was the first meeting in October. Uh, they tabled it at that meeting, and then it went on to a December 2nd City Council meeting where the meeting, that meeting, uh, they 
chose to remand the development plan density buyouts back to the Planning Commission for further review. Uh, now with the original, or with the approval uh, in September by the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission in the West Side Planning Area, which encompasses the Highlands, has the authority to approve the subdivision site plan and development plan. The Council's uh, action uh, at their level is just to ratify the density buy-ups uh, that the Planning Commission has already approved. So in the WSPA, the way the ordinance was crafted, excuse me, was for 99% of the approval authority to be with the Planning Commission or the planning body uh, of the city and, and not so much with the City Council. However, they do have a ratification on the density buy-ups and as the Planning Commission is aware, there is uh, a base density uh, and if you turn to your staff report to the last page uh, where I discuss, uh, I think good enough is, I'm sorry I didn't you know, put page numbers on this, but right before staff recommendations. Um, anyway, the calculation is the base density is uh, 4.1 in the MFR zone, which is a small portion of the view development on the south side of Clay Hollow Wash, and then the bulk of the, that six acres, and then the rest of the development is in an HFR zone, a west side planning area zone, which is a high density uh, zone, and that has a base density of nine units the acre, and it could be all the way up to 18 units maximum. And so there's a range there that is, uh, the ordinance allows certain amenities to be installed to, that would make a more desirable project or something that the city would want in, a, in a exchange for density. And so the city council is sent back feeling that I was not giving a lot of direction at the council, so we'll just basically go through and review what the amenities are as, as you've um, asked me to do. The applicants are here if you have any questions of them. I realize this is not a public hearing, and so I'm not really going to focus so much on the PowerPoint tonight, but on your staff report and development plan because I think it's a little more clear. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a little unwieldy to go through, but we'll go through it point by point. Um, now, in the WSPA, there's required amenities and amenities for buy-ups. I won't go through the required amenities because the staff, I believe, they've met all of those, and, and they really don't add to the density, but uh, I believe they've met all the required uh, points. And so I'll just quickly get into uh, the amenities for buyout. And if you turn to table 2.0 in your staff report, uh, there's several amenities listed. And the easiest way to do this would probably be if you need a picture, if you want to look at pictures, to turn to page 53 of your development plan, which the applicant has provided a, a very good detail of what they're providing. And so, and I want to add that there's a maximum of 22 uh, points in the trails and open space category, and the applicant has provided, from my estimation, 27 points or 27 percentage points. Now, as you can see at the and see if I can, maybe this will be easier. The swimming pool and the lazy river uh, are right here. Now as staff, I have given them two percentage points for this pool and one percent for the lazy river. Uh, I don't see a lot of multifamily developments with lazy rivers that's generally left to more municipal type functions or, you know, gyms, that type of thing. And so I felt that it was a 1% uh, 
percentage buy-up that that was, I believe, accurate in my estimation. Two basketball courts. There is one down here and and this is going to be unwieldy, but there is one in this area closer to Mountain View Corridor. I think you can see where my green pointer is. Now, there was some discussion that, well, it says basketball court, so we should only give them a percentage point for the basketball court. Well, logically, when I think of that, well, I guess you can take that stand, but then you only get one basketball court. Because what's the incentive for someone to put in more than one if they're only getting, you know, one? I think it creates a much better development on all of these um, if they're given per percentage points for each of the top lots, playgrounds, basketball courts that they're, they're willing to put in. I think on a development over 35 acres, if they're going to be given 2% for, you're only going to give 2% for one basketball court, then I as a developer would put one basketball court in. If I'm not going to, you know, and that's just the nature of the ordinance. So that's the way it's written. Is it is it a problem? I don't know, but you know, logically, that's the way we have addressed it in other areas of the, the WSPA. In the long view, view area, we've given you know multiple percentage points for uh, additional items. So the fitness center. Uh, excuse me. The center is right here, and it's inside the clubhouse. Uh, three playgrounds with equipment, and that might be best looked at if you turn to item number seven on your uh, staff report, where it shows playgrounds and top lot locations. And you can see they're, they're spread out uh, pretty well around the development. They're not just clustered in, in one area. <coughs> and the forecourt was seating. Now the forecourt is on number eight right below that is right next to the, the common area. That's a place where of course, people can sit and watch their children play or have, uh, you know, some type of area for people to uh, associate. What was the percentage on that one? The forecourt with seating is 2%. 2%. And then the fitness center was how much? Uh, fitness center is 2% also. Okay. Uh, the parkour course uh, is this amenity right here. It's at the extreme northwest uh, portion of the development and it's inside of this, this active open space area with walking trails. You can see these are different parkour monuments uh, that people parkour on. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I, I guess the way I look at it, the shape I'm in, that would just be instant death. And so, um, anyway, that is what they've been given uh, percentage points for. Now that that is, you know, not specifically listed, but in the WSPA ordinance, there is something where if it uh, is a, a like enough amenity, you know, then it can be granted percentage points. Uh, by ordinance. It's up to the discretion of the Planning Commission whether they want to grant, um, you know, percentage points for a parkour course. You know, because some of these things are not, you know, the, the ordinance with the list of all things was I, obviously wasn't meant to be all inclusive because of that paragraph. Go ahead. You, you said it's, if it's a like enough? Is that what you said? I didn't yeah, if, if it's a like, like if it's like, a like, like a, a playground or another little. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it something different? Is it something that's going to set this development apart? Is it something that's going to add to the development? You know, uh, multiple playing fields. Uh, again, that was on in your staff report. I have highlighted that on uh, image number eleven, and 
the multiple playing fields that I chose to show on that are all in the Clay Hollow Watch area, uh, which is right here. However, there are playing fields in this common area. Uh, as I point in, you know, I think there's a playing field associated with that. But the ones I've highlighted are the ones in the Clay Hollow Watch. Uh, picnic area is uh, the picnic area is adjacent to the pool and clubhouse. Common greens. Uh, the common green is again on image eight. The common green is right between the, the four court receding. The landscape buffers. Now the one, the, let me see if I can back up. The landscape buffer is adjacent to this trail area that will serve as a trail. And so it will buffer these buildings uh, from the common green and the uh, the area, the active playing areas in the wash that will be piped and will be landscaped and maintained by the developer. Uh, the landscape tree colonnade is <coughs> this area. Let's see if I have them. And I apologize for this, but this is. Well, anyway. If you, I have an image in your staff report of that. Yes, we turned to image 12. That shows the tree colonnade. And simply a tree colonnade is a, an area where uh, people can, you know, walk through. It's a nice landscape area that has common, you know, trees placed in a symmetrical pattern or a pattern that is you know, pleasing to that. You see a lot of this done at the daybreak development. <coughs> um, and so that's it for that uh, trails and open space amenities. Now, as I've said, uh, from my estimations, they have installed 27% worth of buy-ups, but they can only go up to 22%. Are there any questions at this point from the Planning Commission? So one of the questions that I, I pulled out of the city council minutes was that it seemed like they were counting some of these as duplicates. If I take a literal reading of the code, it said the table below shall be used to determine the value of each installed amenity within a development. And it says... So literally that means for each amenity. That well, so that's how I'm reading it. And that's the way I read it. So it says top lot. One, not top lots. One. So I don't know how literal we want to take the code in, in making this this math for each installed amenity. Yeah. So I'm I'm just throwing that out there for discussion. It, it, is it pos is it possible to bring up that ordinance in front of us so we can see that? I'm just going to revoke your appointment as chair because of that. I'll leave Dave in charge now. You know, and, and the point I want to make is that uh, when we were working with Greg Mikolaj, who was the zoning administrator at that time, that's the interpretation he made of the ordinances was for each amendment. Commissioner I think that makes a lot of sense to me um, that each each item that's placed in is counted on its own. And, and my reasoning for that is that, you know, we don't look at our city as a whole and say, you know, we have a park. We have many parks throughout our city and it costs our city a lot of money to maintain those parks. Um, and we, we look at them as individual installs. Uh, I feel like it's it would be um, <clears throat> kind of 
I guess, hypocritical of us to, to look at a developer's land and say that, you know, two different basketball courts in two different areas are basketball court. You know, I mean, he, it costs the developer money to put those installations in. And, and I'm not downplaying that they're going to make money back from that because that's otherwise they wouldn't be in business. But, but the fact that, uh, that there are two should be counted as two. And that's just my opinion. Thank you. Commissioner Gray? I can kind of, and, and I agree with what you're saying. But I also can see the council's point when they said, I mean, if you go to a park, for example, and, and you go over to West Orbe City Park, how many tennis courts are normally put together? You know, most of the time you have one or two that are, you know, you have a couple of courts put together. So I can also see where the council's coming from and saying, hey, wait a minute, two baskets. If you decided to put 22 basketball courts around the, and, and, th and th this will sound ludicrous, but if you decided to put 22 basketball courts around the perimeter of my complex, I've met the buyout requirement and I can do whatever I want. So I can see, you know, I can see where, I can see where the council's coming from saying, you know, when, when you look at like the four courts with the seating and the common green, what's the difference between that and, you know, a, a couple of the other open spaces, or what's the difference between the common green and a playing field that are both pieces of grass? So I can understand where the council's coming from, but I also understand that it says each amenity. And so, you know, the, the difficulty is what's the balance there to say, all right, do we say each top lot? Because you, you, so to just take that analogy, if, if we were gonna put a thousand square foot top lot, but we split it up into two 500 square foot pieces, does that mean we get the two buy-ups where one, a thousand square foot would, eat both of them are the same cost, but I get an extra buy-up because I split it in two. But you also get more utility depending on where they're placed. You do get more utility where they're placed, but but I can see where the council's coming from with that. What with their you know with what they're saying is okay. Are we are we taking one amenity, splitting it in two, so that we can get extra you know we can get an extra buy up? Uh, am I off point there, Judy, with what I saw with the council? No, um, I think they felt like, um, and as they read this, you know, it says playground three hot lots. With swing sets. So they're not looking at three thought lots which are different. They're looking at three that are the same. It's not telling us anything other than swing sets. And so we're giving them extra points for exactly the same thing. The basketball courts I agree with. I was I agree they should have each have their own point system. Right. The thought lots we were in disagreement with we were in disagreement with the Lazy River, you know, and everybody has a different view of this. We felt like it was part of the swimming pool. Well, but then in reality, if you deduct those two, then it still wasn't written down in the 22. But, yeah. And and then the other thing was um, that bothered them was the buffering along 5600 West. There's no buffering. That is a large Highway. No, there is buffering along 56, and I'll show that to you. Yeah, if you could, because it isn't shown on the map. Let's take those. We'll take those one at a time. Well, let's go through the rest of the optionals. So the hang on. Um, so even looking at these buy-up numbers, what's the discretionary mark to say that the swimming pool is one point or two? It's in the ordinance, and it says up to two. Yeah, up to two. But what would make that a one percentage point? The lazy river or the swimming pool? Uh, no, if you were to look at a swimming pool and say, no, this swimming pool is 1%, this one is 2%. I don't know. I think that's the issue with the ordinance. And, and uh, when I look at an ordinance, if, it, if an applicant put a swimming pool in, then I will give them the 2% because I think it's a, a swimming pool that's sufficient in size for this development. So. And it says basketball court singular is up to 2%. Tot lot singular is up to 1%. So, I don't know. But yeah, so even if we take out some of the, the contentious items, if we remove the Lazy River, if we take the tot lots down to 1%, uh, 
Um, and then the only other one that exceeded the maximum allowable, and then it, we can argue that each installed portion of that was the playing field for 4%, but even if we were to knock that down to 2%, that still leaves us at 23% total buy-up. Yeah. Okay. So, but, you know, I'd, I'd hesitate to cut off your nose to spite your face because, you know, wow. uh, do, do you want all these amenities installed or do you want one tot lot with 500 units or do you want four as a proposal? You know, I don't think they're asking because it's not going to affect anything. I was just wondering, it, 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 is it the, the, the option, the one that's the trail in the open spaces that we went up to the 22%, is that the one that was the most contentious? That's the only one I heard anything on it. And I mean, I, yeah, I didn't hear anything on what, I don't think anybody complained about the enhanced doors or the equal dispersion or anything like that. So, or the monuments, I, did you hear anything like well, that? There, there was a, at the October meeting, there was a, a comment uh, during the public hearing that no one should be given extra credit for monuments, but that was an opinion only. It wasn't the council, it was a person from the audience or one of the general public that made that statement. However, it's something that's specifically listed in the ordinance. And so the applicant has chosen to do that. And that's what all of the developments in the Highlands have done, is chosen to identify themselves as part of the Highlands. and so. And the only assumption I can make is that when the Council and Planning Commission and staff years ago approved this uh, Highlands Development WSPA, that was very important to them that they be identified where they were at. And, you know, as opposed to like Jordan Hills Villages where nobody really knows that it's part of a master plan uh, community. So what I was wondering is, is that if, if most of the contention that we're talking about is the the optional stuff with the swimming pool and everything. I'm wondering if we just don't go through one of those each each one of those you might not need come to. come up with the number and see where what, what we agree with the number based on what the way we read the ordinance and everything and see what we come up with at the end. And if it if it's still above the twenty two percent then we've made that finding. If it's lower than the twenty two percent I mean, maybe that, you know, there has to be a minor adjustment in the plan, but we come up with that number to satisfy the council's requirement. Um, yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the wash um, is kind of a contentious thing at the city council due to the fact that if they're going to use this as open space, trail, whatever, it would have to be piped. That would be a requirement. They couldn't leave it open. It's too dangerous, and yet we're giving them points for something that they would have to do. No, they do not have to pipe that wash. That is something they are suggesting to do. In fact, we went through this for six months with the engineering department who did not want it piped, and we had to go through a lot of engineering analysis to get them to agree on the piping of the wash. And so it's not a safety issue is to, to for the view to pipe it they just think it makes a much much better development and staff agrees that it makes a much much better development because it's a landscaped area rather than the washes that we normally have in that part of the uh, uh, you know part of the city because there's a lot of them that you know just go basically 50 feet from the the center line of the wash and on each side and that's good and then it's nothing maintained, it's natural grasses and that, you know, and you can call those whatever you want to call them. Uh, but what the view is, is proposing to do is wash this and actually use it as an active, uh, active open area. Now it will still meet the requirements of the floodplain that uh, it's below a large retention area, a large city owned retention area. And so, but it would design in a way that if uh, for some reason that retention area were to uh, be compromised, the water could still flow through there uh, safely without damage to life and limb and property, hopefully, unless they're right in the wash. So. But without it being piped, it is a safety issue for the view. 
if they're going to use it as part of their open space. Well, well how do you, what do you mean? As you just said, if there's water running through that and you've got someone down in there. If, if that's if, if that's if the only if the detention pond above it to the to the west becomes compromised. But that is something that we did look at. Yeah, oh yeah. Our engineering department, what, we spent six months looking at this, you know, the different type of analysis, um, you know, and so it has been looked at and the piping, you know, finally uh, it came to the point where they could pipe the wash and install landscaping, which I think makes a much, much better development because it's a landscaped area, it's a open area with a trail, you know, walking along a landscaped area rather than along the natural grasses and cobbles and garbage bags and whatever else blows into it. So, which which the city will have no, won't be on the hook to maintain any of this. This developer will be doing this. So. Was it the developer HOA? Uh, it'll be done through development agreement. This is all a, this is all a private for rent product, so there won't be an HOA involved. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to get the buffer that Judy was talking about along 5600 West. The set, the required setback of the buildings in this zone are only 20 feet. Uh, the applicant is putting in a bermed buffer, and this is the buffer that I believe is causing uh, the confusion. Is a landscape buffer that has a approximately three to four foot berm, and it's landscaped with trees and and grasses up next to 5600 West. So that is the buffer that they received by up points for. So, can I ask, so I'm looking at the, the 13 and the 14 about the, the active open space and the dedication of a bit additional property along the trails. So I guess my question on those two is the same, looking at the map, they look like they're the identical piece of property. And, and so the question I have is, okay, we install the benches and the, tra the trash receptacles every thousand feet. We, we give them 5% for active open space, but then we're saying, okay, it's also the same space along the wash, you're filling it up. That's another 15% or another... No, no, the 15% is, let me back up to, because by ordinance, this wash runs approximately through here. Okay. They would only be required to put 100 feet through there, no and, more. And how much are they putting there? Well, you can see it varies, and that, that's and the reason it varies is it it um, we've allowed that in other developments in the Lone View or in the Highlands Master Plan. So you can see at this point they've dedicated much more area, 290 something feet, where it's 113 feet at this point. 117, 136, 152, and so I, I think with one of my other staff reports, it was a, it's about 160 feet. So they, okay. So they've dedicated more, you know, about 60 feet, and also what they're doing is choosing to landscape this and buffer it, so it's just not like this guy walk out and he walks right into the, the wash and it would be nicely landscaped along this area. So let me ask you the question then, because a couple of these are the playing fields then as well. Yes. So what's the difference of having that land, because it says, because it's the installation of landscaping and irrigation along the trail corridor. That's, that's one of the issues. So if this is landscaped and it's 136 feet, are we doubling the points because we're putting a playing field in the landscape part that's the extension of the trail? They don't have to put a playing field in there if you're not going to give them points. They can just landscape it. But what's the dif what, I mean, what's the difference in the landscaping between a playing field and putting grass in there? Um, well, I think a, a playing field is probably more leveled out. Okay. To where it can be used. Kids can kick it. You know, I'm not saying these are soccer field size because they're not. Um, but I think they're leveled out and usable open space is what the ordinance says. Otherwise, if, if they're not going to put a playing field in, it could just be left rough and hilly and they could just put grass in there. And or they could just throw 
some sort of seed. Yeah. Or they, they still put, landscape it. Put big trees in there or whatever, but they're choosing to use put playing fields in there. And that's kind of in conjunction with uh, the approved trail corridor. And, and the developers of the view have been really excited about this trail coming through this project. And it won't be a private trail, it'll be a public trail. And they're even allowing uh, the general public to make use of this entire area. And so. And then I, I'm, I'm going to ask one last question, and, uh, and maybe then we can figure out how we want to go through this. But the parkour course, why would that be any different than any other trail? So, so because I've been I've, I've been to hundreds of places across the country, army bases in particular. You have a trail, and you have you have little stations along the trail. Why, what would make the parkour course different than a trail with just some exercise stops along the trail that really aren't that much different? Um, you know, that's a good point. I think it is it's something different in your development plan. He, the applicant did show, you know, it really is, you know, they're larger blocks, you know, things can, people can jump off and okay. jump between, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're probably talking about uh, the thing we have over here at Veterans Park where there's a place where people can do right. knee ups. And then I think they'll also have that along the trail to their trail area okay. too, along with the parkour. But I think the parkour certainly won't be for everyone. You know, it will be more for the young and young at heart. And, Potential chiropractor patients. I, I don't know. Well, that's what I was going to ask. You're going to set up a chiropractic office just outside that on the perimeter. That's a different story. Orthopedic surgeon on, on staff in the clubhouse. And the code allows for those those amenities that are not listed in the table to be considered as needed there. Commissioner Hyatt, you have something? Uh, no. Commissioner Skoski? I was just going to add uh, that, you know, I. I see these parkour videos all the time. People post them on online, and they're funny to watch because it's always kids smacking into stuff when they didn't quite make the leap, you know, whatever. But but the one thing that I've noticed is it's almost always at like a kid's playground where they really shouldn't probably be jumping from one structure to another with, with kids playing around that, you know, these older kids doing this kind of stuff. So I kind of like I kind of like that they're they're building an area that kind of accommodates this this new sport that we don't understand. I mean, for my generation, it was skateboarding. You know, I couldn't skateboard anywhere. There were signs that said no skateboarding everywhere. But there was no accommodation made for skateboarders until we finally got wise and started putting in skate parks. And now you don't have that problem. So something like this, I think, is a great idea because you're going to – you're taking the people that want to go bust themselves up and you're giving them an area to do it so that they're not endangering kids and, you know, it just provides a place. Commissioner Hyatt? I just wanted to say with these amenities that they brought in, the Lazy River, give it a 1% or whatever, or no percent, it's still the same. Uh, it's something new, and, and the parkour course is, is cutting edge, and, and uh, uh, with a project this size, they're going to need to keep things uh, top shelf, if you will, and, and done right in order to get the uh, uh, renters in there that they're, they're going to be marketing for. And I think uh, they've gone the extra mile with with some of the uh, buy-ups and, and whether we gave them uh, points for some of them, I, I have to think that they're going to do them anyway just because uh, from a marketing standpoint and, and uh, uh, from a success, making the project a total success. So I, I, uh, I like the project from that standpoint for sure. So do we need to hammer through this list? Yeah, I think that for the council's sake, I think we need to go through at least the optional ones, and 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 maybe the the, the ones that we talked about, that Larry talked about here a second ago with the trail, 
and, and you know, and, and I think we need to at least put on the record what we think if we end up approving this some specific, for lack of a better term, some specific findings to say, hey, here's the reason why we decided that we want the playing field included as extra points along the trail that's been filled in because they don't have to land, you know, because it includes better grading or whatever. I think we need to put some of that stuff on the record for the city council. So I agree. I think we ought to go through each one of these uh, one at a time. And if we want to change the percentages, the, we, we do that and we come up with a percentage. Because I think that's the ones that are the most contentious is a couple of those, the playing fields and the optional stuff. That's just me. So I, I agree. I think we ought to go through them and just talk about it. So let's start with that. Let's look at the pool and the lazy river. So the, the question from council is whether those should be included as one or separate. Commissioner Stassi. All right, maybe it's a uh, builder perspective, but you can put a swimming pool in and they're gonna give you credit for that. I know that you know in a lot of our facilities, uh, a lot of uh, municipal facilities, they have a, a lazy river attached to the pool. And yes, there's water flowing through it, but it's, I mean, from the builder perspective, that's an add-on, that's an addition, and there's a lot of value that's put into adding that second unit. A lot of different equipment goes into that, the jets that blow the water around and stuff, and it's it's a completely different system. So I would I would say that that is a separate entity from the swimming pool, and I would award uh, more percentage for the Lazy River. Commissioner Heyer? Sorry, Commissioner Pack. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, I would agree with Commissioner Sikowski in, in the sense that there's got to be some value attached to going the extra mile and putting that in there. If there's no uh, value attached <coughs> to that, other than, as Commissioner Heyer mentioned, a, a marketing point to be able to obtain and retain residents, I think we'd be doing a disservice by not honoring that commitment to making a first-class project and agree it's attached, that maybe it would be different if a lazy river were in one place and a, and a pool were in another. Um, and a good point by, by Chairman Laws where looking at the code where it's up to 2% for a swimming pool, but in a way that part isn't so much a swimming pool as, a, as another amenity. Now, now would I go, you know, 4% down to two times, you know, 2%? Probably not, but, but I think there should be some consideration, at least a percentage point there. Um, the same thing that was mentioned for the basketball courts. True, you've got a court, slice it in half, it's still a court, but now you've got two halves, and if they're on opposite ends of the development, I mean, that really does make a difference, because right now I even think about where this lazy river and pool are located. It's in one area, and, and I'm, let's say that I'm looking clear on the other side, now I've got to walk. It's not quite as convenient making that, that arduous trek. <laughs> you know, it's not that far, but... But you get the idea, it's much more convenient so if I can step right out and be right in there. So that, that's why I think uh, I would personally give consideration to the swimming pool and, and then when we do get to the, to the basketball court, it just for the sake of comparison, I think there should be some consideration given to, to breaking that up into two separate locations, even though it is the same amount of cement that's being poured and the same amount of basketball standards that are there. Commissioner Green. On this one, I I think I tend to agree with, with everybody else is that this is that the lazy river I mean if we if based on the ordinance that you read that it, it, it it's for each amenity, even though it's attached, I tend to think that if they put a swimming pool on one side and a swimming pool on the other side, we'd probably give them credit for that because there are two separate swimming pools. If this were a swimming pool and a hot tub, like you go to a hotel, I'd probably say no, they're the same thing. Because adding a hot tub to a swimming pool costs you an extra, you know, few bucks and that's not a big investment. But given the land that it takes here, I, I, I tend to I tend to lean the same way that I would call the lazy river a separate amenity. I wouldn't go to the two percent and say it's an extra swimming pool because we can go up to the two percent. I think that you've got a you've got a good sized swimming pool plus that extra uh, you know that, that extra amenity I, at the Lazy River. I think I, I think I agree that I'd go with one percent there too. 
Then he, uh, he opposed the granting 1% to the Lazy River and 2% to the pool. Commissioner Hansen is opposed to that. Okay. Keeping that in mind, uh, let's let's keep plugging along down the list. So two basketball courts were granted 2% by staff. Anybody not in favor of that? I, I'm, I'm not sure I buy this one. Okay. Um, if you put both basketball courts together, and, and the ordinance is tennis court, and, and, and most people put two tennis courts, I mean, that's the obvious stuff. I, I'm not sure I'd go 2% for two basketball courts. I, I, I might go 1% for two basketball courts just because we're talking about a piece of concrete and some, you know, a couple of basketball court. I, I just don't see that as, as, as buying up that much density, you know, buy, as a density buy-up for dedicating another, I mean, I don't know what these size are, but the, if you're going a full-size high school basketball court, you're talking about 5,000 square feet, uh, you know, 50 by, you know, 50 by 100 roughly. I'm not sure that I would buy that as a, as a full 2%, but that's my opinion. I disagree with that. And again, that's because um, if I were going to put two basketball courts side by side and I was going to build them, I'd have all my equipment right there. I would grade the land, I'd compact the land, I'd put forms around the outside and I'd make one court. And it's putting two basketball standards on each end and you got two courts. It's quick and it's easy. Where you've got two, you have separate land prep for both sites. You have to move equipment back and forth. You've got an additional site on each site that has to be formed and poured. Um, there's, it's more complicated, and, uh, and there's more expense there. Even if you don't see it as being more expensive, it's, it's quite a bit more expensive for the builder to do that. So uh, in my opinion, I think, I think they deserve the 2%. Commissioner Hansen? No. no. Anybody else other than Commissioner Green opposed to the 2% for the basketball courts? Okay, I'm trying to run a little tally here to see where we end up at the end. 2% uh, for the fitness center. Anybody opposed to that? Okay. Three playgrounds at 2%? Pardon me? Three playgrounds at 2%? Piece? Uh, total. 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 Are we talking the top lots or the These are just the playgrounds. The top playground. lots are next. Okay. Anybody opposed to that? Okay. Uh, the three top lots for a total of 2%? No, I don't think you so. You how, how big are these top lots? Do we know? Any idea? <laughs> Uh, they don't meet the same top lot standard. <laughs> you want to come up to the microphone so we can catch that on the record? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Give us your name real quick. My name is Gardner Crane with UN Land Company. I'm going to try to answer this question without sounding like a fool. <laughs> uh, you've all seen in, in your city parks the really huge tot lots that are uh, $60,000 uh, systems. Uh, they won't be that big. Uh, each of them will be about half to a third of that size. Is that, I don't know if that helps you. But the cost is about twenty to $25,000 e uh, each. And so they're, they're about, the, they, one of them would fill this room wall, wall to wall. Does that, does that help? One of them? Yeah. What would the amenities inside of that be? I, I can't answer that intelligently. But you, you, just the typical stuff that you see, you know, modern equipment that you see in some of your newer parks. It's typically game time commercial type equipment. Um, and frankly, we haven't identified the exact kit in each location that we're going to use pending some of these discussions. But uh, I hope that helps. Is that helpful at all? It sounds like it's, that, that, that's, like it's the same one that's right over here, just in the, in the veterans park over here. 
by the uh, by the rec center. The, the, my kids call it the squishy park. Okay. Uh, that that kind of what I'm imagining. Yeah, it's right over by the blue squishy baseball field that's over there too. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I can't picture it myself. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I hope yeah, that helps. slides and little things that they can climb on. There's not as, there are like three or four swings. There's not. Yeah, really I mean, there's low, there's typically ground. a couple of couple of slides. Yeah, it's mostly just a set of monkey there's bars, merry go round type spot with the steering wheel on it, stuff like that. Yeah. But but about the size of this room. Thanks for the context. I hope that helps. Yes, thanks. So with that in mind, 2% for three top lots. Right, it's fair. I'm okay with that. I still have one. Anybody else in what disagreement? Were, what, what did you lean towards 1%? I think I'm going to lean with 1% there. Okay. Uh, the four courts, 2%. No opposition to that. Uh, the parkour. Actually, there was the common green in there that's 1%. Uh, that's farther down. Separate, separate item. Yeah. Separate item. Separate oh, item. you're going down that list. Yeah, we're I'm just going down this list. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was going down the staff list. Okay. That's how I wrote it out first. Uh, so the parkour course for 2%. Anybody in disagreement on that? Okay. Uh, so the playing fields were 4%. I think this came up in relation to another item, but which we'll get to in a minute. But any have anybody have strong feelings on on the playing fields? Uh, I would prefer seeing at two percent rather than the four. Okay. I, I would just question why we're giving four for because there were five playing fields. So why are we giving four percent for five? What what is that rationale? Why would it be five for five or two mm -hmm. for five? I would I would have to. Defer to staff on that one as to, to why that ended up at four percent. Probably because of shared number one, two, three, four, and it says playing field up to two percent or one. So each playing field could be up to two percent. Yeah. If you take so a literal reading of the give up to ten percent for this. Yeah, and they've chosen for four. And just yeah, to clarify, right. these fields are maintained by the community, they're not maintained by the city, right? Yes, they maintain, yes. They're not, no, they won't be city maintained. I, I, I could see doing I 4% see. at least, just because of down the line me. They're you know. playing fields. We haven't even identified them as soccer fields or no. baseball fields. 2% seems more than enough for me. Yeah. I'm for all five of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have an opinion on those ones? I think I tend to lean with Matt there, Commissioner Clooney. I think I tend to lean that four percent, four percent there may be generous, given where they're located. But and they're all squished together in the same area. I guess if they were distributed, it might make a difference in my opinion. But we have five of them right next to each other, so yeah. But we're also talking about though, it's landscape. It's not just a field of grass, right? I mean, like this, it's sod at least. So there's there's systems that have to go in place to maintain those, and that's all coming out of their cost. We're not right, right. You know. I, but when you look at my my thought is along with this is that when you look at the the five playing fields, two of them are two of them are toe to toe. The, the other the two two you know the two at the, the far eastern end. Yeah, eastern end, it's one feet, yeah, I mean, literally there's a division of a few feet between two playing fields with, you know, and on the on the far west end, the division between the field that runs north and south and uh, northeast, northwest is, is almost nothing that they almost, to me, they're, they're really the same piece, in my mind, they're the same piece of grass. You could stretch the, the, the third one in here, but I, I think 2% there would be, I think that that's, I think that's easier to call 2%. I, I, so I agree with you. About, about 3%. 2, here, 2.5. 2.5. 2.5. Two <laughs> well, what about the, the, over by the basketball court, there's a, what's that? Is that 
another. By the basketball court, that's well, you have a playground. Play. You're talking about on the far west side? That's just a playground. Just immediately to the west of the basketball court? Yes. Is that it's marked the same as the other five, so would that make it six? Oh, oh yeah. So it is. Top of this one up here. Oh, you're talking about the one down yeah, on the far uh, south end? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. in the south of the south. Five, yeah. South of the south of the south of the south that's true. Okay, for any interest of time, I'll write down that we're somewhere around two to three percent, 3 percent consensus. Because of that, I'll Lane, I'll the commissioner back. The, the, the question <laughs> I have is because we, we got the approximate size of this room on the top lot. What, what is the approximate size that we're talking about here? Because true, they're close by each other, but they're still the same amount of size. Whether they're close by each other, what type of area are we talking about? Because that does make a difference how big they are. And as Commissioner Sikoski mentioned, you, you've got irrigation systems, you've got to mow it, you've got to maintain it. So they're probably uh, 50 feet wide uh, and the larger ones are, because this whole stretch is about 800 feet along here. So, so 50 by 100. The one down, the one on the south end is probably, looks like it's about 20 or 30 feet wide, if it's yeah. 40, 50 feet wide compared to a basketball court. Yeah. Okay, okay so I'm going to, I want to just make two thoughts here. One, we can go back to the argument we had with the basketball court and the proximity. We're not moving the equipment all over the place to, to put these in. We're just, just straight down, right? The other, the other argument I would make on this is you talking about needing to provide care, mowing and maintenance and whatnot. But this is also open space, right? It's still going to need to be careful. We're not going to let the area around the playing fields just for a while. Right? It's still going to be cared for. It's still all going to be watered. So is it really that much extra care to have to do it because it's considered a playing field and this is more level than the area adjacent to it? I mean, I, I think I think I could look at like a half a percent, yeah. half a percent for each one. We got six of them. That's three percent. I could be I could be comfortable with six percent or with three percent. Three percent. But three percent. There's six yeah. fields. Half a percent population. Any other feelings on that? I can go with three. Okay. I think I could buy that. All right. Um, I Josh. Yes. Chairman Lewis, it, it might be helpful if I explain something, due to the fact that when we've seen this and sent it back to you guys. Please. Is we all visited with these developers in the very beginning, but there was no talk of bias. We saw the original thing without any talk of bias. The first time we saw bias was when you sent it to us. So we were kind of in shock as to, gee, this isn't what we were presented. As they talked to each one of us individually, you know, this isn't what we were expecting. And I think that was a shock value to see all of a sudden they're asking for this many more units that we haven't discussed with them or talked with them or talked about any bias. And you so, didn't discuss. So, well, now hold on. We discussed the original. Was that out of context or was that in a public meeting where that discussion took place? That was out of context. Okay, and so we need to be careful that we discuss what is on the agenda. And they, they got in touch with each of us. So we can only work with what we were given that's right. at the time. That's right. And what we're looking at tonight. And that's what we were doing when it was given back to us. Mm -hmm. Working with what we were given. Okay. Which I no longer do. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, continuing down the list. Did you have some more insight for us on one of the items we currently just were on? All right. <laughs> Understood. Understood. <laughs> All right, two percent for the the picnic stuff. I'm going to post to that. Okay. Uh, common greens was one percent. See now. My question: If we're talking about common green, what's the difference between a common green and a playing field? Right. Right. And so I tend to think that that common green, given where it's at, between the buildings. And, and, I, and I'm going to stretch this into that, that courtyard as well. They're just in the middle, of their dead space in the middle of the buildings that we're trying to get extra credit for by putting grass in between the buildings. So I'm not a fan of the 1% for the, 
for the common green, particularly when you've got four quarts on both sides of them that we're already counting, and it's just a grass piece in between them. That's that's my thought. My, my concern is is that the ordinance specifically lists common green, and the applicant has installed a common green. What's what? So let me ask you this question then. So given the, given the standard definition of what a common green is in a town, let, let's say given a tip, you know, you, you go to a northeastern town where they have the town green, what makes what makes this a town green other than the fact given a piece of grass the name that says common green? Well, I think that's up to the developer's design. That's what he's designed for his project. Now, he could have not put anything in there. Well, uh, but, but, but if he doesn't put anything in there, what's he going to put in there? He's got to... He's got to maintain that, so it's either concrete or grass. Yeah, but it's a place. You know, the playing fields down in the wash area, I think, will be pretty active spaces where someone with younger children and older adults may not be comfortable. I think this gives sets apart that area and maybe for somebody it's a little calmer. That's that's the way I look I, at it. I can see where, you, I see where you're going with that, but... I mean, we drop. If you just follow my logic through this, you've got the four courts on both sides, and we've drawn it. We've drawn a piece of, uh, we've drawn a line around a piece of grass, saying that's com common green. I, I mean, can tell you the difference. What's that? I can tell you the difference. Tom? If you look at where the common green is on on the development area, it's backed by houses or building units. So. The intention is to be able to walk directly out of your unit and have kind of a backyard area where you can just <coughs> be right outside your unit. Whereas the playing fields, you have to make, it's a destination, you have to walk to that. So, just hear me out. Yeah. So the, the intended use is so for a common green is more designated for like elderly and things like that where you're not necessarily going to have a big soccer game going on there or something. Okay. I, I, I understand that completely. But the question is, is that if I took, if we take that square off and don't say it's common green, it's still going to be a piece of grass there. And, and Maybe it, it might be rocks. It might be rocks. Right. Okay. But if it's if it's rocks, it's still a landscape area and it's still part of the open space. So there's no cost to maintain it in the future. Yeah, I just I just have a hard time with calling it a piece of grass in the in in the middle of uh, a bunch of for lack of a better term apartment apartments. I just have a hard where we've already got things on the end and this is just a continuation <laughs> of the forecourt. I have a hard time giving giving them one percent for the common green. I really do. Mr. Clinton? Yeah, and I would argue the other direction. I think this is more dedicated for a more mature the grown-ups. I mean, you can see there, and there's no credit for this given, but that little area just off to the side is a uh, putting green. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This is going to be a little bit an area where you can have a slightly more mature um, group of people that are coming over there as opposed to the common greens where the kids are going to be running crazy or on the, the part, the, the top lots. I would, I would be... We're not giving any credit for a cutting green, mm -hmm. so I think that this is kind of how we kind of lump this in here is giving them credit for this is a very different space than what the other spaces we've talked about. And it's intended use changes through design. I think that's the answer is you can look at the design layout over on the right and, and the design layout over where the common green is. They're very different. There's, there's uh, walkways that are put in there in breaking up the space, making it intentionally so that you don't have a soccer game. I mean, it's intended to be an area to stroll rather than, a, you know, an intent, intended to be an area where you play. And within this development, it's really the only area that's set apart from buildings in the whole middle. But everything else we've discussed is on kind of on the periphery of this whole entire development. Right. It's that's the only thing that's kind of right in the heart of it. So, mm -hmm. so I will buy your argument if. So lead me. I'm going to lead you We're down not, to the to the next, going back. To, no, I'm going to lead you down to the next court to the next one. It's the courtyard. If you look at the picture, the courtyard encompasses the four courts, the court green, and the putting green. So, from my from my standpoint, either we give the credit for the courtyard or we give them the credit for the common green, but we can't do both because they're all the same thing. 
I mean, if you look at that picture in number nine of the courtyard, so I'm going to drop down just one. The picture of the courtyard shows that courtyard space, which we've already given credit for the four courts that are in there, and we're giving them credit for the green. We can't give them credit for a courtyard just because they added the putting green to it now. So there's my logic is either we do one of the two there. I don't think we can do, looking at this really hard and looking at the picture, I don't think we can do both there. Because the courtyard and the common green are the same area and so are the four courts. So I could go with that. So I can buy, I'll buy the 1% for the common green if we drop the 1% for the courtyard. Yeah. I'm not opposed to that either, but it begs the question, if we put the top lot on top of it, do we still get credit for both? I don't know. Just for argument's sake. Just given the way it's diagrammed out, I think that it appears that it's trying to get double credit for different things. I'm not opposed to that. I think that's sound logic. Anybody else differ on that? I also, I mean, if you look down farther, and we'll get to it, but the tree colonnade is also in that courtyard circle, and that's at 2%. So I agree. I think one or the other. So if we drop the courtyard, then it makes it easier for a couple of these other things. Got it. Okay. So then the landscape buffers, we're giving them 2%. Anybody? That's the landscape buffer along 56th, right? No, that's along the wash. That's along the wash. The building's along the wash. This general area along here will be a different type of landscaping that is intended to buffer these buildings from the wash area. I support that because we're also, they're also generously allowing public access through that trail system there, which could make that a very busy area. So the buildup gives privacy to the residents. If it's the right, if we're talking about the right landscaping there, I think I'd agree with that. If we're talking about just putting grass in there and making an extension of the playing field, I wouldn't agree with that. Now, there's a landscape plan at the back of your development plan if you want to look at it. We know what page that is. There's several of them. So it is, I think that one. That's a trace of charges. Can anybody find the call out? I know, I have one. By the way, on the landscape plan, just in case this matters, in the landscape plan on L106, the area that we're calling the common one is actually listed as grass volleyball. And the community green on the landscape is the two four courts with seating. That's page 99. It's partially in L104, which is page 95. And it's partially in, it's like... Well, at least you get the idea of what they've got along there. These are the trees and shrubs described at the beginning of the section, right? Yeah, trees, shrubs, a sidewalk border. So let me ask you this question. And I'm just going to, I know we just talked about this, but we're in that area. The playing fields on L104 are called active open space. And then, and we've given them credit for the playing fields. But then as you get to one of these other, one of the other criteria, there's a criteria, let me find it. There's a criteria for active open space. So is it a playing field or is it an active open space? Are we just using different names for pieces of property to get extra buy-up? Now that I'm looking at this landscape plan. For which section are you looking at? Which section was it that had the active open space? L104, I believe, had some of it. Hold on just a second. Yeah, so you're on active open space, active open space. But it seems to me that in one of these criteria. Well, I refer to your amenity map because the landscape architect may have mislabeled some of this stuff. That's the reason I chose to use the amenity map. Okay. 
Because there was a criteria for active open space, I thought I saw. Well, so that's the generic heading for cool. all of the biops. Okay. All right. Then I'm good with that. Okay. And, and we've, got, we've got extra buffers and trees. I, I, I can probably buy the 2% there. So then the last one uh, from this list is the, the colonnade. Colonnade. And that will be in this area. And I think that <clears throat> from discussion with the applicant, they really want this to be a focal point uh, to this portion of the development. And so uh, the reason they chose to put the extra uh, landscaping and trees into that area to make it more of a focal point along Window Ranch Way. So. I think given the intensity of landscaping there, the amount of trees and the amount of shrubbery and stuff, I would. I would say 2%. Anybody opposed to 2%? Mm -hmm. no. okay. So real quick math, we have a majority opinion for a total score of... ...25. So Dan, so for my, which ones did you reduce? Uh, so we reduced the playing fields to 3%. And we eliminated the courtyard. The courtyard for 1%. Okay. So that still brings us to 25% for that. And they, they can only yeah, have 22%. That was the last one on there. And so the most they could have is 22%. Yeah. So there's. Um, huh. It's not in the. It's not in the list in the staff report. Oh, no, it is. Oh, we did the four courts. We, we did four courts without seating. Without seating. Without seating. So, so where is the, where where is the four courts? Court so that's not that. listed in the staff's buy-up calculation. There's only the four courts with seating. Yeah, I took that out. So. Well, that's at least, this is 27 inches. So does it still equal 25 now? Yeah. Okay. So we're still at 25% for that. Put your hands Thank you. Um, I wondered how uh, the fencing adjacent to the public facility, how, what kind of fencing is present or are they going to put up? Along the wash? I know, along the uh, substation. Oh, I didn't hear the that. Rocky Mountain Power Substation. Oh, um, I don't know. What was the fencing along Gardner? Are you looking that up? And that really wasn't a buy-up amenity, it was a more no, of a set it wasn't. Finish. I just wondered what type of fencing, if it's present or if they're installing it. Uh, no, there's nothing there now. Right and so they will be installing fencing. So. The only fencing uh, present is along Mountain View Corridor. And, well, then the, the, where my cursor is the power corridor, I believe, comes something like this. And so they're not going to fence. The power lines will actually be over a lot of this area, running through where the, the parkour course is and that. So I think you're talking, correct me if I'm wrong, Judy, to the north of that. And I don't know if I have a good picture of that or not. Adjacent to the commercial property, yes. that, that, that that's something more we we generally get into a final approval um, because the ordinance does require uh, between differing uses to have uh, a substantial barrier, and so where it's adjacent to commercial, we may require a, a rhino rock or a precast concrete type wall. So. Okay, as long as there is a wall there. Oh yeah, there'll be something there. So. Okay, thank you. So are there any other of the, uh, the specific buy-ups that we wanted to Let me discuss? I, I have a couple. Um, yeah. Under, it, it's number 13 on the, the, the staff picture report, and, and it goes back to something that, I don't know, it's, it's, it's irritating me, but it, it's, it's number 13, active open space, and it's also listed in the 
developer's report on page 43, it says installation of active open space amenities accessible from trails. So what concerns me is that if we look at the space that's circled on the developer report, that's that active open space 5%, we've already given credit for playing fields. We're given credit for the, the landscape buffer and they want 5% for the active open space. And so I'm leaning, and I'm still looking at the numbers here, but if, if you know, when you, when you talk about total buyout and everything, I have a concern with that one, and I also have a concern that, it's, that it talks about they got a 4% they, they buyout, or on their, in their report, they, they, they calculate a 4% buyout for installation of fencing along all trails and walkways, yet there's not going to be fence along every trail in the, in, the, in the project because they're part of the open space. So those are the other two that are probably sticking with me the most is we have playing fields, but we also want to call it active open space. We have a landscape buffer that we also want to call 5% active open space and I can't buy that when I'm looking at this in, at that detail and I also have a hard time with the 4% saying we're installing fencing along all the trails when we're when we're not. No, they will be destroying the three rail fence that's that's typical in the, the view. So there's going to be a array, array on each side of yes. the fence. Yes. Okay, so then I can I, I can live with that and then and not the, the, then let me interrupt your, my logic on approving the active open space and the playing fields. Now, why a playing field, I think, is set up more for people to be able to do things without be able to run without necessarily getting injured with holes in that uh, or unlevel ground. But the whole thing is still active area. And But the other point is... In the highlands, we have a lot of these these trails along washes that are more in a natural environment, uh, so to speak, which ends up being weeds for a long time and, until the natural grasses and vegetation. But the applicant is, is choosing to landscape this entire area and irrigate it. So I think that it's, it's a very, very acceptable trade in my mind. So. Uh -huh. I like to also just say that, like, if you, I mean, if we look at uh, item 11, where it shows the multiple playing fields, if we were to block out just what that square footage is, and then we were to add up the additional square footage of that lighter shade, um, that's also active open space, or, or open space, I mean, it really would add up. So a lot more square footage. Even though, I, I, I would venture to guess that it's even half again what we're considering playing fields. So the management of that active open space is just as expensive as as maintaining the fields. Yeah, I'm just concerned it's a double count. But I'm looking at I'm looking. Larry, did, when we when we got the when you did the city's total buyout, how many percentage did you come up with? For the total buy on their report on page forty, they asked for one hundred and twelve, and I think they came up with ninety eight percent. So, okay, because I, I I'm looking at I'm looking at overall, and even if we even if we bought theirs lock stock and barrel and we subtract everything that we did, and even even if we take off the five percent for the double, we're still above one hundred percent. You know, but at least at least at least my. Uh, my, my great math skills leave me above that. So I, although there may be some points of contention here, like that, that 5%, there may be a point of contention on a couple of the ones that we have 3% that we have a descent. I think overall we're still looking at night, we're looking at 97, 98% for the buyout. And, and given the fact that the way the numbers worked out, correct me if I'm wrong, this, this, this allowed 17, with that buy-up, it allowed 17 units, 17 something units an acre in this 16, building. I think in the HFR it was 16 point, uh, 16 .67 units per acre, and that's uh, down from 18, which would be the maximum 
And then... But based on the, based on the maximum allowable density with the buy-up, 17.84 are still possible. Yeah. So we're still under, even, even then, we're, even if you reduced it to 97% and you, we tossed another percent or two out, we're still at the 16.67 yeah. units per acre. And so in the end, it really, what we've discussed, we still come up with the, the same end result. Or, or uh, did I miss anything? Uh, no, I think you're you're pretty close there. Push your hands. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, ask the developers, or Larry, um, we are now installing LEDs and all new um, subdivisions or whatever. The street lights, yeah. So, so they are aware that they yeah. would be required to do the yeah. LED. Yeah, along the streets. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, I think we've been... We've been requiring that now. I, I don't. Do the city ever pass the ordinance? That's in the final city, but I know that Terrace Hills and a few others have been installed. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, you're right. I think that's the way to go. Actually, I'm going to do that one. Any else? Any, anybody else want to throw out a discussion point or deliberate on any of the uh, buy ups? Commissioner Green. Based on the findings set forth in this staff report, the design, the design shown in the view at 5600 area, uh, sub area preliminary development plan, and after reconsidering the density by it contained in the WSPA as shown in the development plan, upon the evidence, the explanations received today, and our discussions, I'll add the word, all dis our discussions, I move that the Planning Commission approve the view at 5600 sub area preliminary development plan located at approximately 5600 west. 8,200 south and in the MFR zone for 51 units based on 6.01 acres with a residential density of 8.50 units per acre and in the HFR zone 480 units on 28.79 acres with a residential density of 16.7 units per acre subject to the conditions one through five listed in the staff report. Second. Motion by Commissioner Green, second by Commissioner Sikoski. Any discussion to the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. That concludes our agenda for this evening, unless there's anything further we need to discuss. Move close. Thank you. That's a lot of work. And so Thank you. The next one I'll be bringing in the same format. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to thank you all for welcoming me. It's, it's going to be great <laughs> having you here. It will be. We have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Sikoski. I don't know that the planners are going to be really happy with it. But <laughs> <laughs> Any objection to that, uh, that motion? I'll second that motion. We stand adjourned until January 19th. Great. Thank you. Good to have you. Oh, I'm glad to be here. <laughs>